Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986. I want to say thank you for tuning in to try to figure out some more about these dogs. And today, you know, I got a fantastic comment and really like two days in a row, back to back. But uh, 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 saying the same thing, and, it, and it's something that I want to read, not the whole thing, but just some of it, to uh, give, give someone some insight here. I think the number one problem people, uh, problem with people who usually owns dogs in cities is that they have not seen a dog in its natural setting to see what he or she is capable of. And that's something that is, I'm going to believe, one of the most challenging things with a lot of people, a lot of y'all, a lot of people, a lot of people with their dogs, is you've never seen a dog doing like it's said work that it's supposed to be doing. You just, you, you see your dog and you just think like, oh, it's just dog. But you never really pay attention to that thing that just gets that dog like wanting to do what it's supposed to do. All these dogs today, we're getting a little away from the dogs being active and being in prey drive and having a lot. But all these dogs were in, in reality here for a reason, to be able to do something for us in reality. And, and once we figure out what that something is that that dog is supposed to do for us, and we give that dog that something that that dog wants to do for us, that's where you're gonna see majority, not all, of course, there's no perfectness out here, but majority of every little issue that you see going on with your dog, such as all this anxiousness and this frustrationness and this angerness and this rageness and, and all this stuff is just gonna start to disappear because you're gonna be able to give that dog what that dog is looking for. And this dog in specific, she's, she's been very, really challenging because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to always have a way to be able to help people out. You know, that's my job that I see as a dog trainer is to actually give you real, real, real world results help with your dog. Not some fakeness here, some cover up mask here, but like to actually get to the true cause of what's going on with this dog. And there's something with this dog here that is this fascinating because all my others, I can use my flirt pole thing and be able to get the dogs to chase and activate. But this dog here is a little, uh, Ophie, come here. This dog here is a little, a little uh, 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 weary of it. So I've got competing motivators because I've got chickens out here running around. So I'm trying to convince her to do something that she already just doesn't really care for. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get her to get engaged with it. See, see if I can get her to start playing. But this is something that you, 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 you just keep doing, you keep working it, you keep finding, you keep doing. Because in reality, this little flirt stick, flirt pole thing, I'm, I've been able to use on pretty much every dog. But she has this like, she's, she's, she's nervous of it, I'm gonna say. When it's moving around, is she, she, she's just like, she's like, what, what's, what's about to happen? And, and, and I can, in reality, foresee that in a lot of people's dogs. Because this is a little intimidating looking if the dog isn't like focused on that, that item that's at the end of it. They're seeing this stick going, they're seeing all this, it's, it's, it's a lot going on. So all I'm gonna do now is just to get her used to chewing on something. And, and there was nothing that I could get her to chew on. The bag wasn't working. The fake toys weren't working, squeaker things weren't working. So I ended up finding a squirrel, and this is a real squirrel's tail. And they actually sell these. I didn't know that they sold that online like that. But you could buy a, a fake squirrel, I mean a fake, a real squirrel's tail. They like dehydrate, do something to them to make them so they're like shelf steady or something. But uh, you, you can get a fox tail, you can get a beaver tail. They got all these things out there. But for what I'm gonna do with this dog is something real slow and steady to just kind of get her to want to engage in that and to focus mainly on this because she's focused on the stick. When I move the stick too much, she's just like, oh my goodness, you're about to hit me with it. So I wanna just move the stick around with her. Let her chew on this, let her chew on this. Let her chew on it, just move around, move around, move around, get her to get engaged, and then see, see if I can get her to get going. And then once she gets going, cause here, we finally got her to get going. <laughs> she lost it. That's why for this, I, uh, uh, I'd wanna get a bigger, a bigger, bigger tail. This tail is too small. But finally, this is the first time I've seen this dog actually truly just engage in it. Now she's able to get what she wants to do out. She loves to do this chase thing. And for her, it's mainly to chase and get it out. So I could just keep go, go, going at this for, for an hour or more and she'll, just, she'll be happy with it. She doesn't really care too much to actually chew on it. So as she gets going, she's, going, she's getting what it is that she needs to do. And this right here, something as simple as this is working with your dogs. I mean, it's fascinating to me see how, I don't know why, but sometimes I just turn the camera on and the dogs just want to look perfect for some reason. And, and I try to get them to not look so perfect, but somehow they just, what's over here, girl? And now she's look, searching for it. And uh, 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 to get the dog to finally just get going and get going and get going at it. Because the main thing is I want them to look at that end piece, at this piece right here. Uh, don't worry about the Oreo. He, he, he want to get out here and do this too. And uh, Oreo, all done. And uh, 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 we want the dogs to be able to engage what they want to do. So this is the thing with each of our dogs. Each, each breed of our dogs have something that they like to chase, move, do, do what they do. Some dogs, especially a lot of smaller dogs, they're, they're looking for like rodents. 
mice and rats and, and moles, and they sell all these as well. And the lady I even bought my bunnies from, she actually sells like little mice and rats. You can buy a whole live one from her. And uh, people have this stuff all over the place. And it's to get that item, you know, you don't obviously have to get it live. You can get them, I, I'm not sure what the term is called outside of like the taxidermy stuff, but you can get ones that are stuffed that are not, that are real, but they're not alive alive. And you'd be able to use that as a tool to be able to get your dog to be able to express the drive that's behind it. Now, each of these dogs has different, different techniques and different styles. This dog here, the technique and style that she really uses is that I just want to, I just want to chase it and get it out of here. So here she's going to chew on it because, of course, I started that game off a little bit with her to, to see what she's going to do. But in reality, the best thing that I want with this dog is to kind of do more straight line runs like this. Little, little like we're just going to go get it. We're going to go get it so that she can, she can go ahead and get that run out. And what's going on is she's moving. She's running. She's mentally like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to catch it. She's just she's she's going to exhaust herself. And, and in reality, just just what I'm seeing now, people. There's going to be something that you can get at the end of this to get your dog to engage. The hardest part is if your dog is scared of the motions of the stuff doing what it's doing like this, the stick moving. I mean, I just imagine it being scary. And all my other dogs didn't have an issue with it, but this dog in specific just has an issue with, like, seeing that. So you just play with the dog, play with the dog, play with the dog, move the stick around, move the stick around. They're going to be more engaged or, or more excited about engaging you, like, like, straight up like that, as opposed to this, the end of this big old thing. So I just get them going at it, get them running, get them running, get them running, get them running. And once you get them done getting running, and she's not really going to go all, all out today right now because we just went on a, a eight mile walk. And but uh, I, something for me, I got to start conditioning this dog to be able to run more. So that's why I want to get her to be able to use this. But not only that, I just see the value in them chasing and doing stuff that's artificial. That's that's me. That's that's doing that with them. It's not them that are out there like we're not doing it free in the wild and free in the open. Because even here, I mean, I've been letting her move chickens around and stuff. But at the end of the day, I want her to do this with this is us. So since I'm seeing and in reality, I don't like using these words, but I'm controlling the motions and the, the motions are being controlled. So right now, right now, even I kind of like it that she's losing it. So she has to activate and overdrive that nose to like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And then she finds it. She's like, oh, yeah, there it is. And then we just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And you'll see your dog, what, what it is that your dog is looking for. But there's something just just like amazing about when we're doing this together. She's not off free, just just she, she's not all that good sniff and search dog that's one thing i found out real fast about this animal here she can't she not can't but it'll just take her forever to sniff stuff out whereas your dog may be like on it sniffing stuff out and uh but there's something that's like some sort of amazing connection that is going on here that 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 we're we're working this together here if you're working the the the, the animals in the field because i do this with the border collie uh, all the time and i've noticed that things get better because it's it's us that's doing it I'm in the whole complete control of the whole thing. I'm not in control of what the, the, the cows, the, the donkey, the, the chickens, the pig. I'm not in control with their actions and what they're doing. But I am in this. And this is where when you just keep doing it more and more and more, you end up finding that situation of what they really like to be able to do. So her, she, I'll give her a little bit of time. She's, she's chewing on it, but she's not, uh, she's, I'll say it like that. She's nibbling on it. But she's not like just going absolutely insane or just crunch it down and trying to destroy it. So here and there, I just I just let her go ahead and have it. And this is just going to she's going to for one day one, it's it's going to probably be a little bit more. But the more, 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 more that you keep doing it, it's going to get a little bit less. But that's where you're going to want to start to read the dog, understand the dog, because as much as she likes chewing on it, she lets it go easier now on her own because it's not what she wants. This is the part that I'm going to say that I just see in many, many dogs. They like the chase. They don't like, they don't go to that whole, I want to kill it type stance that, but, but they, they bite down and hold that first because they have all this like extra energy of like this, just, oh my goodness, you're giving me that chance. And then they just, they get it and they snatch onto it. But after more and more, I just keep working with most of my, all my dogs doing this. They just, they stop that. And they just like to, what she just did right there. I want to get a little close to it, but I, I, I want to just keep chasing. I want to keep chasing. I want to keep chasing it. And this right here, I mean, oh my goodness, even this girl, she's young, she's very athletic, she's, she's very good energy. I couldn't do this for more than probably 10 minutes. And then me just being out here by myself and not worrying about being in frame, I can like run with her and do stuff. That's if you're that active, I'll say. Not, not, a, lot, not, a, lot, not, not a lot of people are. But not even just that, but I could just simply just walk. 
I could simply just get dragging and get it moving and I could flick it around and, and get it moving and get it moving around and, and she'll only just keep getting better and better with being able to find it. But right now she's, she's like, she's just, <laughs> I could see the puppy in her right now for the first time in a while, but she's just, she's got this goofy, fun little playful thing. She's not out to try to harm anything or hurt anything, but she's, she's being able to get what it is that she wants. And this is what's gonna be able to give you a dog that is much, much nicer. This is where if you're running into like said behavior issues, the main word I wanna use here is, how do I get my dog to listen to me? That's like the, the main thing that I hear people always say, how do I get my dog to listen to me? And the main thing I wanna explain about that is, we need to listen to them, and then they're gonna to wanna to listen to us. And they're saying, most cases when the dogs start getting absolutely wild, the dog is saying, I have something in me that I need to do. And that's what we wanna attack first. We want to get the, the, the genetic makeup of the dog, its needs met first. And then if we're doing this, we're going at it, we're going day after day, week after week, month after month, and the dog is just, it's not coming around, you know, which I'm just going to highly doubt. But after you, you realize that it's not, it's not coming around, then we can go ahead and, okay, let's start adding, because mainly for here, if you want them to really listen a bit, little bit better, this is where you add a little bit of obedience work in the middle of doing this work right now. So here, every time that she would stop, I would say a word. I'm not 100% sure what language I want to use yet, so I'm just going to refrain from words right now. But you can use like wait, sit, down, whatever they're doing, stand, stay, whatever, whatever stance they're in. So I love the wait command. I train that like heavily in all of my dogs. So if we're walking, I could just say wait, and they just stop. They stop and stand in place, sit down. Most cases stand in place because it's like we're just about to go do something next. But you start working on that in the middle of this work that you're working with them. And that's what makes it fun. That's when it's the true, whole, hardcore, all positive way of doing some things. That the dog is going and, and, and the dog gets really, really close to it and you could say, wait. And that's where you're getting the dog to be able to like control its emotions. And the word I wanna use there is the, a new term that I just realized of self-management. Not impulse control, but self she's gonna self-manage herself to be able to deal with these emotions that are going on. Be able to listen to that word that you're saying and you'll be able to release her to say, you can go ahead and get that at this moment. This is the the, the, the reality of, of it all. You don't need any treats added into this. You don't need any pets and praise. You don't need any, 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 anything extra. You just give them that thing that they want to do. And then they're going to say, okay, well, you listen to me because I had something in me I had to get done and you, you got that for me. You got that done for me. And then the dog is going to say, okay, now you, you just want to hang out in the house. Let's just hang out. Because a lot of it is like day one doing this. I mean, if I never did this with this, if I never ran this dog, because this is where she's going to look different today than most people's dogs. Your dog's, I mean, dog's probably going to look how, how my Border Collie looks. He's intense every time. I don't know what it is about him, but he's just intense. And uh, he just goes hard every single time, over and over, like he goes 100%. And, uh, and, and at first, your dog, it's, you could do that, and it's going to be a little bit longer. It might be 10, 10 minutes. It might be a, a half an hour of just doing this the first time. But you just let them, let them do what they got to do. And, and something that I guess I would recommend, because just me, especially with this young dog here, is I don't like them rolling too much, jumping too much, even like sprinting too, too, too hard too much too soon. Just, just I want her body to still build up. But if you've got an older dog, just, just let them run, man. Let them, let them go, let them go, let them go, and then just give them a break. Because here would be nice. I don't know why it's not warm right now. It's just beautiful right in this specific location. But uh, uh, this is where you get you a, a bucket of water, and, and, and you just take a break, you take a break, because even right now, because there's a, I don't, I don't know what it is. Oh, because the chickens are always all free. But there's a chicken right there, and, and that's where I'm going to say there's a competing motivator going on right now. And I want her to, we're going to stay engaged in this. You stay with me. I know there's that chicken out there, but I'm the one that's more exciting. I'm the one that's more fun. I'm the one that's here for you. I'm the one that's going to be able to give you what it is that you're looking for. And I'm going to be able to help you and be able to guide you and be able to set it up so that we can consistently keep doing this. And then the dog starts to look forward to that. Because that's what this dog looks forward to. Every single day, we get to go for our walks and our runs and our sniff searches and our, and our chasing stuff and just i mean we we running at this point but uh, uh she gets to look forward to that every day and and we want them to be able to have something to look forward to that's what's going to calm the dogs down because they're like oh you got that that extra energy out of me when your dog is up in the house and it's pacing and it's moving and it's doing what it's doing it's saying i got something i need to do and most dogs just simply taking them for a walk down the block is absolutely nothing so i i would hope that more people would just understand you have a dog because this is this is where for me I'm like the, 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 the person, I, I'm the dog trainer in reality, I'm the animal working person at this moment. I don't only just work no dogs, but uh, I'm 
getting to the core of the dog and, and me being able to get to the core of the dog is allowing me to be able to see how to be able to get the dogs to be nice. Not getting the dog to be able to be a good, obedient, doing uh, heel work, sit stays, down stays, and things like that, but being able to get the core understanding of what the, the, you know, what the dog's makeup is all about. And I get that out of the dog and I've been seeing just absolutely amazing things start to happen to these dogs. So this is for me to be able to, to keep doing with more and more dogs and to keep on giving more and more people instructions on how to be able to do this with your dogs to see that your dogs are gonna to start to get better and better and better. And the main thing is up front, don't try to rush it too much. Just just go ahead and be, be slow about it. Cause, cause, Cause again, this dog here, she just, she had no desire for this thing at all, zero. And this little thing is, is, is small. It's a little flimsy little one, but uh, I've seen ones online that are like three times longer than it. And I just kept trying new stuff. I kept trying new things and new things and new things. Whereas like my border collie, the dude, I don't even need to put anything on the end of it. The dude will just go after it. He just, he just has a heck of a good time. But, you, but the thing is you really just want to watch the dog, just see what the dog want, wants to be able to do. Cause every single day with this, I, I probably the next time I even take it out, I can put it right back to a bag because she's understanding what we're doing here now. I don't need it to be anything, any, anything, anything of real. She understands that she can run, she can chase, she can do what she needs to do. But uh, the main thing is you'll start to see the, the, like what the dogs do. Do they chew on it, nibble it? Do they, do, like what, the, what are they doing with it? And then you start to work them with that and give them that. And you're gonna start to see that the dog is like, oh, I, basically I'll listen to you. And it's something that's strange on what we as humans are and what's kind of like evolving with what, what it is that we're all about today is we like, once you listen to me first, then I'll listen to you. And that's not the way things work in a natural sense of this world or how it is. We got to listen to the needs and the issues and the problems and, and help even solve all those problems for that other thing first. And then that other thing is going to come back. And this is where it gets tricky with humans because the dogs are fascinating. They'll start to listen to us after that once we listen to them. But humans, it's like a, it, it, it's a gamble, man. But at the end of the day, just you give the information out, say what you have to say, do what you have to do, and then you, you just move on. It's, it's okay, I don't, I'm not living with you. But your dog, this is just what like dogs are programmed to do. They're programmed to be with us, to be, be, be here. That's what they're supposed to do. She, she should have more and more focus on me, more and more desire to wanna be around me, more and more care to just be like, what's going on with that guy? But that's what, I, I, I like her. Her and Johnny are similar, but opposite in like what they do but she likes her space. She's not like a, a cuddly, I wanna be all on top of you dog. I mean, she'll do that when we're sitting on the couch or something, but just when we're out, she likes to just, she, she likes her space. And, and, and that's something that was in reality challenging us at first because I'm obviously hounding her, you better stay right here next to me. As opposed to saying, just take your space and we're, we're, we're fine, we're here together. Cause that's how much Johnny is. You probably rarely see that dude with me. He comes in, he checks out, but then he just goes off and does what he does. And, and, and that's just what some dogs are and what they're all about. And we, we, we find that out by doing work with the dog, by giving the dog what that dog needs, what it absolutely needs behind it to be able to survive on this planet. Because otherwise they go into this anxiousness, they go on this just like rampage, they go in this, they get paranoid, they get, they're not sleeping as much, not doing what they need to do. But when we're able to finally give the dog what the dog needs, uh, you go get a drink, girl. You come here, go get a drink, I don't care. You do what you do. I ain't worried about this dog. But uh, <laughs> you give the dog the needs, and then you're going to start to see that the dog is going to uh, uh, just start to just get closer and closer and closer to you. It's not going to give you so much more pushback. Because that's where I, I messed up with this dog a little bit with, up front when I got her with that, with, with like basically a recall on her of like, you better get over here. And now sometimes when I say it, she looks at, shoot, sometimes, most of the time, when I say like, hey, come here, girl, she kind of looks at me like, what are you going to do about that? And I'm like, nothing. We're just going to hang out. We're going to have fun. And, 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 and this was neat about this specific dog. It's like she holds grudges, but I don't want to say dogs hold grudges, but I think that's, there's some weirdness in there that you do something to them. They kind of look at you like, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really like you like that. So you have to be calm and slow down and just relax and just, just chill for a moment to be able to get the dog to be able to see that from you to realize there's nothing bad or, and or even good going to happen. Everything is okay. And we're able to find that by giving the dogs what that dog was created, bred to do. And again, this is like, this dog, I couldn't do this. I probably couldn't handle it in reality, my lifestyle. I couldn't handle this dog the day that someone was deciding to breed to be able to get this. This dog here, 
And same with like Huskies, because most Huskies today don't do the real work anymore. The ones that are training them to do, but they're, they're, they're bred to be able to run like 20 to 50 miles a day, a day, 20 miles plus a day. That's what she was created to do, was to do that a day. Today, heck no, I, I couldn't keep up with that. I'd have to, I don't even know what I could do to be able to keep up with that. But that's what's neat about the stuff of today, that these dogs don't need that much anymore. It's, it's, it's something subtle, it's something simple, it's something that in reality doesn't get us too tired. And if it's, this is hard work for you to move this around, this is where we got the cars to be able to get the car going and get them to be able to run around. But this here is, is, is I mean, this is cool. This is an upper, upper body uh, uh, workout as well for you. I mean, my, this little whip don't weigh nothing, but just the act of moving, I mean, you're gonna watch yourself just shed some pounds yourself in reality, because you're moving, you're doing something. And then when we're moving and doing something with the dogs, oh man, that's, that's like, that, that's me and my Border Collie's prime time together. When, especially at first, when I'm showing him how to work the cows and work the goats, I'm out there running with the dude. I got my whip in my hand trying to move the cows. I'm out there, we're getting hot, we're getting sweaty, we're getting tired. There was even a few times that uh, that dude got so, he was done, he was laid down and I'm still running. And he's just looking at me like, man. And then he forced himself to get up to get back in it. When we're doing stuff together, that's where, oh my, like that, that's relationship building people. When we're doing stuff together, that's how we're building a relationship. We're both having fun. We're both excited. We're both like just, just getting to learn each other. I'm learning how she chases, how she chews, what she does. I'm learning so much about her. And at the same time, she's learning a lot about me and seeing what I look like when, hey, this is fun, this is neat. And she, she wants to be able to do that for me more. So she's gonna want to please me more to keep to make sure that I stay in that stance. And, and that's the beauty behind these dogs. And it's, and it's me to be someone to figure out how to be able to help out more people, how to help more people out with your dogs. Because I just noticed that trying to go more control with more, oh, oh <laughs> you know, chew this up a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna buy a couple of these. Oh, we'll see, I think you'll be able to use a rag tomorrow. But uh, uh, going to the, the, the control and trying to get the dogs to do obedience is, is uh, trying to get the dogs to listen to us. I just realized like that just, that, that, that wasn't successful in anything. Some dogs, you can get away with it because their drives really just aren't there. But the people, y'all that's struggling right now, your dogs, for the most part, I'm almost gonna guarantee, if you're struggling with your dog right now, because you've done obedient stuff, and you're struggling because you, you haven't got the drive of the dogs met. You haven't like met the dog's needs, what the dog needs. And, and that turns into a different case, because most, I mean, that's still most of the dogs at the end of the day, people. You might have that, like, there's like 80% of these dogs, they're gonna be on that, that I got drive, I got something to do. 20% are just like, you tell me to sit, I'm good to go. Because I see, this is what I see, I see a lot of bully breeds, a lot of pitties, a lot of mastiffs that I just tell it to sit and the dog's like, okay, cool. I, I literally, like a lot of these dogs, I just tell them to wait for their food. I just tell them to sit or down and then put their food and say, okay. And the dog's like, okay. And they're good. They're done. They're just like, that's the best thing on the planet. You're the best. You're the greatest. Because they don't really have anything else that like is driving them. That's just, they just want like uh, 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 some manners, I would say. Someone to just tell them to, to, not, to basically deny them of something that they want and just put that rule in there, and then they're just like, okay, I, I like you, I, I like this. Some dogs are like that, but it's a small amount. Most of the dogs are like that in the end, but they have something that they need to do first. Once I give them that thing first, then they're like, okay, I'll wait, I'll sit, I'll wait for you, I'll, I'll be with you, I'll hang out, I'll do what I gotta do. And, and that's what we wanna be able to give to the dogs. So for me, not re realizing that the, the, the control, the obedience wasn't working, giving most people what you're looking for, I had to come up with different stuff, different things that, are, that, that gotta go down to be able to figure out how can I actually give people real world results. Not some, I have to have this collar, I have to have this thing, I have to have this system, I have to have something to be able to convince that dog to stay with me, but the dog just wants to do that. Because more and more, I'll do this a couple more times, a couple more days, and this dog is going to just wanna stay in my bubble. Cause I want her in my leash bubble. I don't really want her in that 10 foot bubble. I, she, this is where we're having a trade off. I got it. We both are going to compromise. She likes a 10, 20 foot bubble. I like a six foot, four foot bubble. So I'm like, let's meet at that six foot range that I want you to basically stay about right there. I don't want her any further than that. If she's just loose, unless I'm saying, okay, let's go do something. So this is where I'm going to put that, put that rule on her. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I want but she's gonna be more and more and more agreeable to wanna to do that when I just give her something that she wants to do. And, and I've already, I already give her what she likes, but now I'm gonna be able to do it in a way that I'm the one that's in control and managing the gameplay, not the wildlife that's just, she's just chasing sporadically and just, just doing what she's doing. And granted, I do not let my dogs just chase stuff anywhere outside of my property, off leash, 
free, just go do what they want to do. They are not allowed. Like today, she got into, we got into a, man, she's getting so good. There was a deer right smack in front of the trail, and she just looked at it like, what's up, buddy? And I'm like, Ophie, we're not doing that. And it took me a little bit. I had to stand there. I had to stop. I had to walk a couple of steps back and just stand there for a moment. Just allow her to see this thing to just be able to just, I mean, this took, this, this is the, the longest part of my walk, I think. It, it was at least a half hour. I was just standing there allowing her to just, just go through it, go through it, go through it. And then when she finally was relaxed, I would take a step. And if she tried to like go do, I just like take steps back and just stand there and just hang out in it so that she could just not be so, she can't chase. She can't chase. And in reality, I don't really want her to chase when she's not on leash doing something. Because for me, what I want her purpose to be is to be able to chase with me when she's pulling me. But uh, I don't want her to just go in the main field out here and just go uh, 500 yards away and just start doing whatever she's doing away. That's not that's not my goal in reality with any of my dogs. Outside of my border collie, that I need to move animals around, do, do what I need to do. But I've just been able to find games that I can do with these dogs to be able to give them what they want. Because the more and more I do this with her, the closer that she's going to say, okay, I like you even more now. Even though I give her the real world experience, I guess I can say, of what she was bred to want to be able to do, I'm also going to be able to give her like a, a, a side game to be able to do so that me and her can be able to just learn more about each other. So this here is how I'll be able to do my obedience work with her because I do want to teach her like a good sit, a good heel, a good all the formal looking things just 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 because. I don't I, that's that's the part. I don't that's why I always say in all the videos, I'm not against the obedience. I'm against the obedience of being the way to get the dog to listen to you. You got to give the dog its needs first and then the dog listens to you and then we can do the obedience and then there's no there's nothing hostile going on here but i'll be able to use this system here and or something else that i can come up with to be able to get the dog to be able to do really really cool obedience work because here it would be like a i would get her to come and i would have her stay and have her wait and then i can activate the game we can do the game we can have fun in the game and i'm not going to run into said behavior issues with that dog because we're doing it out of just fun if she messes up it's not a punishment that's about to happen it's just we're just having fun here man i'm not relying on it so that she looks good in public. I rely upon me being able to give her her needs for her to be able to look good in public. I don't need an obedience command for her to be able to sit at a cafe. She's gonna sit there because of what we were doing with playing these games and giving her her needs met. So the obedience is just an added extra fun hippity hoo ha game going on. And that's what I see is getting dogs to be really, really nice, is finding out how to be able to give that dog that game, that, that, that drive met, and then the dog will listen. And then we can go on to other things. And this is the part where this is the relationship building, people. This is where everything just keeps getting closer and closer and better and better and, and more and more. The word I would like to say is reliable, but stable. More and more calmness. More and more being able to just be, be in tune with each other. Because I'm out here getting hot, getting working. She's out here getting hot, getting working. And she's realizing we're doing it together. Somehow I have it here. And she's like, I know you got it. And, and she's seeing, oh, you're doing this. You're providing this for me. That's 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 the magic, man. That's that's the key to be able to get your dog to be able to just really, really be nice. And 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 I prefer still still like it's just mind blowing how my border collie is with this. I prefer doing it the fake way with the games over the real what the dog was intended to do. So if your dog is a is a mouse hunter, I would prefer to get a fake one, bury it somewhere and have the dog find it over a real one. Because it, it's just something about us doing this together that is just like the, the, the key of what's, what's going on here. Mainly, I'm going to say that because of, I believe that it's because the dogs are so, we're, we're so far bred away from doing this actual real work. Most of these dogs were like on work duty, man. I'm talking hours and hours a day. They were capable of doing some incredible stuff for us. And now they're like retired. Soon enough, like I'd say 50 years maybe, they're pretty much all going to be retired at that moment. Now we're gonna have a few slim bits of dogs that are out that are still like high performing doing what they're doing, but most of this is just, it's fading away. We don't need like rat control too much anymore. We got artificial rat control. I can set up traps and baits and certain things. So I don't need a dog to do that anymore. I don't need a dog to really move my animals around too much to, uh, anymore because of the, the way that we're containing and moving the, 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 the animals. I mean, anyone smart enough understands you, there's ways to be able to move. So you're always going to have that bull that doesn't want to go. So that's where you're pretty much going to need a dog to, to help out with that. But once they understand the system and you put a little bit of pressure on, we're done. The, the, the animals are smart enough to know what we're doing and what's going on. And, and most of these jobs that these dogs have, it's, it's, it's becoming extinct. They're not needed. 
She's not needed to do anything that she was created to do. Running trails and keeping the path and making the firefighters go and doing what she, there's no one needed has a desire for that anymore. This dog has no need. Most of these, uh, 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 like hunting dogs, German short, short hairs and, and even labs and even uh, Dobermans and shepherds and all these dogs, they do not have the work anymore. To, they don't need to work. They don't have a desires anymore. So we're gonna be getting out of that. It's gonna disappear. And of course, all the dogs looks are gonna start to look different because that's what we're doing. Because they're getting away from like their, that's why German shepherds, their ears are gonna start to fall down. It's just what's natural gonna happen. Yorkie's ears are gonna start to fall down because that's just the, the thing that happens when they turn into basically pets. But soon enough, we'll get there. But today, we're not there yet. So today, the main thing that we have to give that dog is that little bit in them. And some of these dogs, some of these dogs, this right here, once a year, the dogs, whoop, we're good, we're fine. That's all it needed. It needed to just get it out. And once it got it out, it's like, oh, that, that basically, the thing I want to say with that is like, oh, that was it. Like, I thought it was going to be more than that because you, you restricted me so long to be able to just move around like that. And, and, and they just let it go. And here, if you're nervous of your dog being a 20 foot long line on your dog right now, put a 20 foot uh, a leash on the dog and just let the dog run and let the dog do what the dog's got to do. And still, even with that, you can help. This is where you incorporate your, your stays, your weights, your obedience stuff. If the dog's feet gets le uh, uh, tangled up, you just stop, you collect your thoughts, you get the dog, you unleash the dog, you let them be free, and then you run and go ahead and do again. The dog's gonna be just, they'll start to get in tune with us. So the dog doesn't need to be free. And, 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 uh, 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 cause that's, I know one thing that a lot of people are just, you're, you're nervous on. I don't want my dog to be off leash somewhere. I don't know. I don't trust it. And doing stuff like this, you're going to start to trust the dog because the dog is going to start to do some things. That's going to just, just relax you down. Say, oh, wow, you're, you're, you're listening. Cause that's the main thing. You're listening to me now. And it could, mainly it's because we started listening to the dog. Thank you. It's something that just. This is why for me, I, I want to keep getting more dogs in a way of different type of dogs, different breeds of dogs, to be able to show as many people possible of what that dog in, in reality, something that a lot of us should do is whatever your dog is, and it's a mix of something. So just look up all three or all four of the first two dominant traits that it is of those dogs and just go on like do a, 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 a history channel uh, research on those breeds to just learn about them, to learn about what they used to do. 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 years ago. What was the problem that we as humans had to, to want to make this dog come alive? Why, why, why did we start selectively breeding to be able to get this dog? That's what I want more people to do with your dog. You got an Australian Shepherd in your house right now. I want you to get on this YouTube, get on something, and look up the history and the makeup and the understanding of what that dog is. And that's going to give you a little more understanding of like what to be able to pursue to be able to give that dog something. Because what happens is a lot of times that we, we restrict the dogs from doing what they're supposed to do that when we finally let them do it, they're nervous. They, they get, they'll get scared. Because a lot of these, like Australian Shepherds and stuff, they like those big herding balls. I don't like the little small uh, plastic hard ones, the, the bigger, bigger ones. I don't, they just, they, they do what they do with them things. But at first, they may not want to engage it. So you want to do small, little, steady little steps to be able to get the dog to be able to want to get into it. And then you'll be able to get to a point that the, the dog is like, it'll, it'll, it'll make it happen on its own. But find out what your dog is all about, what your dog is here for. Because I, I'm almost going to bet most people, you got no idea like what the, the original fundamentals of your dog is. You see like a video of today of what uh, Australian Shepherd is doing. It's doing some agility, it's doing something, but that's not what that dog was meant to do. It's doing some tricks, it's doing this, but that's not what that dog's supposed to do. That dog is supposed to go <laughs> terrorize some cows, chew on them, they nip them, they're, they're, they're barkers, they nip, and they chase. That's what they do. And once you understand that, you'll be able to really sit and look at your dog in your house and just say like, wow. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. And then you start to figure out how can I get that incorporated into my dog's world so that my dog will start to want to be able to listen to me because these dogs have, have extreme needs, especially, especially if you're picking these dogs up from a farm, man, you're going to a farm land and you're like, I like this puppy. It's cute. And you're taking it and you're going to go put it into the city. Understand that that dog has a farm, something in it that it needs to get out. You can't just get, skip on it. Just say, I, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that my dog wants to chase a cow, so I, mine is not going to do that. And you may get that one, because that's the one that everyone sees. Everyone sees that Border Collie that's just, I don't want to say it like that, but straight up, just dead to the world. It doesn't chase nothing. It don't bark nothing. It don't growl at nothing. It's just there. It's so pretty. It's so cute. And everyone's like, that's what mine's going to be like. In most cases, that's not the one that you're going to end up getting. You're going to get that one that's going to be like mine. That's going to be on 10 over wanting to chase, wanting to get, and want to dig deep on everything. 
And, and that's what we need to understand before we are, are worrying and stumbling and fumbling on what we should do next with our dogs. Your dog has something it needs to do. And, and I want more people to really understand how to, the main thing that I'm seeing is how to be able to get dogs to be able to, to get better, is to give them that. I mean, something as simple as what I'm working with now, it, even with this dog, I watch her week by week just keep getting more and more listening to me, I want to say. That's the best words of saying. Because even now, she's got the, there's, the, everything's out here. But she's, she's still like focused on me. And she did try, even try to reach up and get it a bit. She's like, let's kind of do that again a little bit. She's liking that. Even though she can go chase the chickens out here and do what she's got to do, she's starting to like, I like that. I like this. And in reality, what is she doing more and more of? More of what I want. I just want her to lay there and just chill. Just That's what I want. I don't know why, but that's just my default that I like dogs doing. If I'm standing, talking, staying in place, hanging out, I just want my dog to lay down. And since I want that inside of me, and since I'm listening and giving her what she wants, she's gonna. we're just going to start to be in tune. We're going to start to work. We're going to start to work. And, and, and I'm seeing things that are just incredible. And it doesn't take a lot of work. But, but the, the work I do with this dog is not, not for everybody. So if, if, unless you want to go for a 10 mile run today, you know, you might have a, you're going to have a nice dog on your hands. You, you got a really nice dog. Get you a Dalmatian if you want to go for a 10 mile, like especially trail runs. You're going to have a really, really nice dog. And, and it's going to be able to, 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 to give you just a, a high level of excitement. To be able to like have something to be able to join you with what, what, what is it you're doing. But if that's not what you do, stay the heck away from most of these dogs. There's some that their, their drives are less. So then you might be able to get lucky. But most of them, are their, their drives are still very, 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 very high. And they have stuff that they got to do. And, and when you give them that stuff that they got to do, you, I, why is in house? I'm still trying to figure all that out. But you, anyone could just watch the progressions of what it is that I'm doing with these dogs. And soon enough, this, this, these, these stays that I'm looking for for my dogs, you're going to watch it in any scenario, anywhere, everywhere. Whereas day one, I'm sitting here having to try to force this dog. I mean, I, I'll never forget it because I've got videos of it, obviously, still of forcing this dog to stay with me. You better stay with me or you're you about to die, basically, is a language that's going down. I got that leash on her and I'm giving her a heck of a lot, heck of, a lot of leash pressure to say, this is what you have to do. I'm not giving you an option. Whereas now she's like, I, I want to do this for you. Not, not because you're forcing it, but because I want it. And that's, that's, that's the relationship that I want ever, more and more people to be able to get with their dogs. That's what I've been able to have with my Border Collie before I did any dog training stuff. And all my dogs after that, they were all a mess. They were all a mess because I came in with, you're going to listen to me because of obedience. I said, sit, sit. Oh, you didn't sit. Correction, punishment, sit. Oh, you sit. Pretty. Reward. Cute, cute. That looks good now. And that's how my dogs were listening to me. And that's under a dictatorship that is just false. It's not real. That's, that's, the dog doesn't actually truly want to be there and do that. And I'm wanting to be able to get to the place that dogs truly want to be with me and want to do stuff with me. And I'm finding that with this, and not only just this dog, but my others as well. Because even my parent, he's just, he, he's hanging out over there just chilling. And, uh, uh, but, but one thing I will say is that I do do when I'm playing with my dogs, I only have one dog I'm playing with. I don't do them all, all at the same go. Because I want to be able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with that dog. That this dog doesn't feel like it needs to compete with anything or anybody. That we're just here. We're, we're doing this together. And I like to even get a little further away from where my other dogs are. So that, that they're not worried or nervous. Because like Oreo's right there. He's staring directly at me behind that fence. And he's just like, I want to get in on that. I don't want that to put any pressure on her. I want us to just, me and her. Me and the one dog having a good time. And then later on, when we're doing really good, I can incorporate more and more and more and let all 50 dogs run at the same time if I have 50 dogs to be able to run together with. But I want to do one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm just realizing that these dogs want to listen more and more and more and more. It's just, it's, it's, it's neat. It's really neat. It's really neat. I had a sticky situation. She was halfway to the water thing, but there was a few chickens drinking from the water thing. And, and, and I was like, you can come here, you go to drink. Now, if I know she goes to drink, she's going to go chase those chickens. But she said, I'll come to you. She did it a little slow. But she came to me. And in reality, I just said, I don't care. Whatever. Do what you want to do. I let that go. I didn't put that pressure. You, you better. You better. I just said, you make a choice. Figure it out. And she's, it's just the coolest thing ever. And this is, for me, what I want to explain to more and more people. How to be able to get your dog to listen to you. That's my job as a dog trainer. Because yeah, that's what majority, of, if you're like, I don't care. I don't care if my dog listens to me. It, it just does what it does. And, and you don't need dog training help. But my job is to get your dog to be able to listen to you. And then at the same time, it's for us to be able to listen to the dogs and what they have. And, and my job to start with is to figure out how do I get them to understand that I can hear what's going on with you. That's the start of my work. And then later on, once we got that established, now 
let's you want to do some sits? I, I, I like doing that stuff. I, I do. I don't, I don't like doing it for competition, but I like training it and teaching dogs how to do the sit, the down, the place. I like training. It, it's, it, it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's, it, it is fun. I, I like that part of working dogs. But I realized that that fun part of me doing that with the dogs wasn't getting the dogs better. I want to be able to figure out how to get that dog to really, truly want to listen to you. And I'm figuring that out. I'm going to keep working and working and working to, to figure out how to keep getting that easier and better for us. And that's my job. And that's what I want to be able to help out as many people possible. Hi. I'm such a good girl. I thought I was going to have to leash you up. You just stay with me. I appreciate you, girl. <laughs>